we will continue with the discussion on semi summer sewers. Now, the important thing that we will discuss is pontoon and column arrangements. So, how do you arrange the pontoons and columns in your semi summer sewers? So, this is a vital issue. Now, the overriding principle that governs is the reduction in the wave force and motions. Now, if you want to do that, <coughs> there are number of positive and negative points which you come across. So, first is reduction of platform motions. So, that is the in our ocean engineering actually motion calculation is very important. Although we do do not do this, now this has to be confirmed from tank experiments, which of course, you do not do. Now, in tank experiments you calculate what? Basically, you calculate rows in heat pitch and uh, roll motions. So, these have to be found out from tank experiments. So, in the, the other tanks where you have a sea keeping basin, you can do that. So, this is one of the guiding principles. In the last class I told you about this reduction of wave impact forces. Uh, actually, in our case, the hydrodynamics is more important, because uh, the platforms are stationary in one place, you know, uh, ships um, uh, that is not that much uh, important, because it can move from one, the resistance is another major issue, but in our case actually the hydrodynamic forces and motions are very important in these types of uh, 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 structures. The other one is the reduction of wave impact forces and also that is another term which I have told you wave run up. This is increases your wetness, wetness of hull. So, you have to keep the whole platform, especially the decks in a dry mode, you know, at all times of the uh, year. So, that is one of the fundamental as aspects of design. Now, the third category is, the third item is structure stiffness. Uh, you st uh, structures, I will tell you the uh, forces which are come up, basically your squeeze pry and racking forces. So, the whole structure is designed based on uh, this uh, squeeze pry failure, squeeze pry racking as opposed to the hull gutter bending of your ships. Here actually the structure is not particularly long with respect to now, based on this a number of um, design variations have come up. So, in the first uh, you can see the independent leg type, now these are actually connected by trusses which are not so shown out here, you can join all these columns. So, this is called the independent leg footing, this is a uh, semi submersible arrangement. Now, the next one that I have drawn out here is called grillage, this is called a grillage array. So, here you have the corner columns, now these columns as you will see they essentially give support to the deck, is not it. And the other term is they increase the stability of the semi submersible as such, because the main contribution in the operating mode comes from water plane area of the columns. So, this you have to configure. Now, these corner columns are giving the corner supports. Now, in between if you want to, if the span is quite long, then you decide on number of smaller columns. Now, they are located inside the pontoon. So, this is your pontoon. So, in between you have number of these smaller columns. 
So, the main reason for these smaller columns is reduce span of deck. So, deck span is reduced by placing these columns. So, here you would have similar. So, this is this type of arrangement is called a grillage array. So, this is another type. Now, uh, the other there are number of other types also you will have instead of uh, so your pontoon arrangement is in is in a closed form. In this case, it is closed form where this is in a these are independent footing, these are the your pontoons and this is your column. So, this uh, uh, the pontoon is very large. So, this sort of arrangement you can see uh, is not very favorable for transport or for movement from one place to another. So, it is only good for uh, in a fixed location, neither this nor this. So, the other type of arrangement which is also there, there you have number of pontoons, but instead of having a grid edge, you can have this as a linear array. Now, this uh, uh, structure is somewhat amenable to transportation that is uh, for quick deployment. So, this is a linear uh, longitudinal pontoon. So, you have pontoons like this. somewhat you know, similar to the catamaran hull, but the only thing is in the drilling mode pontoons are immersed. Now, you can have so many columns. Now, columns actually uh, basically I told you they give deck support. Uh, one of the major functions of a column, the other is to give the stability characteristics of the platform. So, you can have so many columns. So, this is called multiple longitudinal pontoons. Now, the problem is if you have so many columns, it will increase your wave impact forces. Now, here actually the structural engineer you have to do a lot of hydrodynamic calculations and stiffness calculation that is the major work of the hydrodynamics and the structure aspect. So, they go both hand to hand. Now, the major problem that you will come across is uh, if you keep on increasing the column size and the number of columns, your wave the diffraction forces from waves are going to increase. And if you have more number of columns, then uh, now you have to have column uh, uh, connection between the columns by means of braces. So, now the present scenario the design is try to get rid of the braces as I have given in your earlier uh, uh, sketches. Now, the problem is if you reduce the braces too much, it will reduce your stiffness, the strength, is not it. So, how far you can go down that? So, it is always a uh, the designs of this type of platforms are always centered around an optimization study. <coughs> optimization means reduction of uh, hydrodynamics forces. So, here actually the in offshore if you go the uh, you have to be very efficient in calculating the hydrodynamic forces. So, reduction of hydrodynamic forces that is one actually the other thing is reduction of 
reduction of steel. So, steel is a major component in the uh, uh, offshore. So, how far you can steel you can reduce that will decrease your cost, but at the same time if you keep on doing this then maximum stiffness you have to find out. Maximum stiffness especially of the <coughs> underwater truss. So, all uh, kinds of compromises you have to come across. So, that is why we uh, have the design spiral and there is a lot of optimization studies you have to do between the, uh, especially weight and stiffness, weight versus stiffness. So, it is not uh, that simple you know. So, this is one of the ma major as aspect and the other aspect is the safety of the platform itself or this is called structural safety. So, if you want to go deeper into this structural st safety, you have to study what are the various failure modes, very crucial. So, one of the failure modes that uh, number of failure modes is I have told you is this, uh, this is not fry sorry squeeze pry. Pry means you just keep make make it open. So, this is called squeeze pry. So, this is another failure mode. So, this has to be studied. So, stiffness. So, when you uh, go for strength failure modes reliability. Anyway, so this is a, a separate study by itself, we need not go into details of that. And the most common configuration you will find is the twin pontoon hull. Now, the twin pontoon hull is actually very much amenable to your transportation because you have only now, in the transportation mode actually the flotation is on the uh, pontoons, pontoons come up on the surface, but in the drilling mode it is under the water. So, these the modes of operations you should remember. Now, the pontoon has to the uh, semi submersible has to perform well in the two categories of or two modes of operation. So, here you have number of columns. So, this is the most common type because the uh, client will not like to waste his time transporting the uh, semi submersible from one point to another. So, the basic design is centered around whether the, the transit time, whether the, there is frequent transportation of the semi submersible from one place to another or it is stationary in one place. Now, if it is stationary in one place, you can go for this type of variety, is not it? You do not waste so much of time during transportation like ships. The more amount of time the ships they spend in the dock, the, the will not be earning, is not it? So, it is always has to be on the uh, transportation mode. So, similarly here, you have to strike a uh, which you uh, have configuration is best suited to you that actually your client will tell you that he wants frequent transportation especially the drilling semi submersibles where you drill at one place and then you quickly go to another place. So, then then the you will have to this sort of configuration is not favorable or this type of configuration will be favorable. Now, instead of having so this is actually twin pontoon type. Now, if you have the deck very large, you can have more number of columns. So, this is uh, an extension of the, this variety you will have here, out here. Now, in some cases you will find the pontoon is going beyond the columns. So, that is called pontoon overhang 
or the deck protrudes away from the columns. Now, what is the engineering impact of that? So, you can see here part of the pontoon is going beyond the columns. Now, instead of having one column, you can have two, but smaller ones. The, the main reason is in this case, the pontoon is longer. So, you have to have deck support in order to reduce the deck span. So, you can have two smaller pontoons, uh, sorry, two smaller columns. So, this is another twin pontoon type. The other is called the closed array pontoon. Now, in this case actually the bracing members have been more or less done away with, but it is a ring type of pontoon. Now, this type of structure is not very amenable for transportation, but it is good for uh, location at one place or drilling at one place. So, these are the some of the pontoon arrangements you will come across. Now, here actually columns are not, the pontoons are not protruding beyond the columns. So, this is called a closed array. So, if you take any training in an offshore company, you will find all these sort of arrangements. But the another point that I was talking about pontoon and deck overhang. This is why. Now, the pontoons you sometimes you find they go beyond the extremities of the main or the main termination point of the columns. So, this is called the overhang. Similarly, your deck on top will also go beyond the columns. So, that is because if you want a larger deck area okay, and the pontoons go are extended because at the here you will find ballast tanks. So, ballast tanks or trim tanks are located. So, they will give you good amount of trim if the ballast water is located I think uh, at the extreme end of the pontoon. So, the um, uh, trim conditions in the uh, as far as the uh, hydrostatics are concerned, <coughs> the naval architects do have to do a lot of trim and heel calculations. Heel uh, in the st static stability case. Now, the compartmentalization of the columns and pontoons, you, you have to find out from column pontoon partitioning. Just like in ships, so this comes from damage stability calculation. damage stability calculation has to be done. That is your flooding calculations and you find out column pontoon passing through. Now, damage stability calculation you have to find out basic thing that you have to find out is wind healing moment. So, these are floating platforms or sometimes they are called floaters. <coughs> so, this is your naval architectural part. The only thing is the structure is but uh, since they are not 
ship right. So, the columns actually you have to find out where the uh, water entry is most probable. Say this is your column and uh, now column partitioning if you want to do I told you columns house your mooring chains. So, mooring chains are actually kept in the columns. So, this is your column configuration. Now, you have now this is the most area which is susceptible to ingress of water this region. So, this region obviously you have to partition, but here again you have to from the deck you know your chain cable has to be stored. So, you can compartmentalize like this. I don't know, this is one of the arrangements. You know. Now, you, inside this you can have ballast tanks. So, you calculate suppose this column is flooded then what will be your heel and trim. So, basically you have to find out parallel sinkage heel and trim in various configurations of the column and pontoon partitioning. So, you have to partition your pontoons and columns. This is for the sake of calculation of damage stability. And static stability, what you find out? Basically, you have to find out this GMT GML. Now, as far as rules are concerned, I have not come across the minimum GMT and GML requirement, but these two have to be positive in all modes of flotation. That is your operating mode, transportation mode. What mode? An installation mode will be there. There is, I think, three or four modes of loading conditions. So, you calculate all this. So, this is uh, in semi submersibles. Now, the other point is uh, the braces. Uh, I was talking about the braces. So, here there is one configuration. We call uh, these are the columns you can have an array of braces. See, this is one aspect. Now, braces, if you want to design that means, you have to find out the location of the braces where there will be minimum stress concentration. So, you can make a uh, this is called a triangular braces you can do like this. Then another triangle comes out here. So, like this you keep on make a number of braces. So, these are called and under top where you are getting deck support, you will have this configuration. Now, your columns will give the vertical stiffness like this. So, you have to make a closed form like this. Closed ring. So, this is a brace arrangement. If you have brace arrangements, you go more or less in this form. So, this is one and the other term the squeeze spray thing I have already told you and here is your diagram of the loading. Now, the hydrodynamics is in this case it is important. Now, coming to the uh, heave frequency or heave time period it is given. Um, in terms of uh, first you find out this beta, beta is T z over T wave. So, this, this is your heap period, uh, time period of uh, semi submersible heap over wave period. Now, T z is given by this expression. So, this is 2 pi into 
root over 1 by g this is diameter column diameter is given by dc plus pontoon displacement over water plane area into 1 plus there is a coefficient this is called heat added mass coefficient. So, this is you calculate heat period from here. Now, C A Z is heat added mass. Also, D C is column diameter. delta P is pontoon displacement. Now, this heave time period <coughs> lies between, so T z actually lies between 30 and 25 seconds. This is seconds. So, this you remember if you are asked in your interview etcetera, you simply say that it will be 25 and 30 seconds heat period. Now, the, the other important parameter is the um, squeeze pry and the racking force. Now, this you have to calculate from the wave hydrodynamics. Now, this you have to find out say this is your wave profile let us take the linear wave itself. Now, here you will find a crest and your say semi submersible is now riding a crest. So, this is your semi which is riding a crest. Now, in this kind of situation what is going to happen? Now, your most of the acceleration vectors you will find. So, this is you are coming like this water particle acceleration. So, what is happening? And this is your column, uh, sorry, this is the pontoon. Now, the hull of the pontoon is more or less rectangular in cross section. So, <coughs> pontoon is also acted upon by this force. Now, forces from the columns may come in this direction. So, this is called crest, crest centered. A crest centered platform is occurring. So, this is a here you have prying open the platform trying forces, they are trying to spread out the platform. 
most excepting the column force, so most of the forces are coming like this. Now here crest centered platform prying open. The other the opposite thing also may come that is the platform may be on a trough. So in this case uh, in platform uh, design the wave uh, acceleration, fluid acceleration and velocity you have to calculate at every point of the platform. So how you will do that? So uh, this is normally done by CFD studies. In the CFD you first discretize the plat platform and number of panels and at e each nodal point you find out these vectors acceleration and velocity vectors, particularly the acceleration vectors. So that will tell you the forces are coming that are at these nodal points. So there is changing, isn't it? So if you have a good CFD program, say uh, this is where in our case I think we do not, we have only ship hydrodynamics but it is offshore we do not have. So if you have a good CFD program you will find the variation in the dynamic forces with the passage of the wave, you can nice some graphics and all you can study that. So this uh, now here actually the other part is uh, coming, so the deck acceleration. So now if you want to study this, this is a pontoon, this is coming from the column and the other is coming from acceleration vector coming from the deck, the deck acceleration is coming downwards. So actually the whole platform is going down. Now here the opposite can be happening. So that means your acceleration vectors now these actually uh, uh, you have number of the you know wave mechanics program. So you have to study the platform actually in structural engineering that is much more required and number of wave mechanics program will give you calculate all the forces. So this actually you have to sit with the hydrodynamics person. So he is the proper man and uh, naval architects they should be good in hydrodynamics. So most of the off offshore companies they have specific in-house programs they find out this. So platform motions and forces. So this is another case which is happening. So your this is say let us say this is a tie rod or another brace. Now in this case the deck is having an upward acceleration. So instead of the deck going on, so the deck is having an upward acceleration and the columns are trying to go out. Now the wave profile, wave profile will come like this. Now your water particle acceleration will go down. So these are the acceleration vectors which are coming from the water and smaller vectors will come out here. Pontoons uh, again this is the reverse of that. So pontoons are again like this. So this is what is happening, this is squeezing the platform. squeeze because of this water particle vectors, acceleration vectors. So direction of wave propagation is in this direction.
No, racking, racking you have like this. So, the pontoons, so this is one pontoon. Now, at one end you will be acted upon by a downward force, this end there will be an upward force and again here there will be a downward force and on this you have an upward force. So, this is racking, racking or twisting, the whole semi muscle is being twisted, so that is called a racking force. So, these are some of the um, mechanics you have to study before you calculate the forces which are coming on the columns and braces. Now, uh, coming to the tension the platform, now these three cases you say semi submersibles. G is floating ships, what is the position of G? Tension leg. Like. Well, although this is there. Now, tension leg you find out buoyancy is always greater than displacement, stability given by <coughs> tension in the tethers. Spar. Now, spar you will find center of gravity is G below B. So, these are some of the points you should always remember in your design. Now, this semi submersible we have uh, discussed in detail. Now, coming to the tension deck platform. So, these are actually a <coughs> the what is called the variation of the semi submersible design. Now, in semi submersible, you, you will find a lot of heave motions. So, heave restriction is normally done by semi submersibles. You will find this is the motions are damped by a large mooring systems, especially heave, heave damped by catenary moorings. So, mooring systems play an important role in restricting your heat motion. Now, what else? And semi-summer have your uh, pitch 
uh, sorry your um, this sway motions are sway is restricted by sway and surge restricted by by thrusters thrusters you will have semisummers are specially notorious by having thrusters very large catenary moving systems and a heave compensating device Now actually you will find in motions, semi servers will have more or less the opposite motions for TLP, where you can see instead of here you can see semi servers going down, the deck is going down, you find in a TLP it is going up. Now in semi servers you will find the air gap issue, air gap semi servers. Now this is very crucial in your TLP design, air gap. So how you calculate this air gap based on the clearance from the wave. <coughs> so if you have a large air gap clearance, you can clear all your waves, but it will increase your CG. So that is detrimental for your GM. But in TLP actually, since TLP are held down onto the bottom, if you have a very small air gap or air gap is in the a very critical for TLPs. So it is always preferable to have large air gap in case of TLPs. Why? Because it is tethered, you, uh, the semi submersible uh, actually rises and goes down with the wave, but in TLP it is all, uh, held down with the seabed. Now suppose a large wave comes to the height, then again it is going to crash on the deck. So air gap critical for TLPs, it is always better to have larger air gap. So air gap calculation for TLP is more crucial than semi submersibles. And uh, stability actually, uh, platform stability in case of TLP, TLP actually the stability against capsize. This is actually given by tension from tethers or rather you write tether tensions. So this is the most important uh, variation from semi submersible design, tether tension. Tether tension actually is vital to TLP stability. Semi submersible stability to some extent you can have on the moorings. Moorings are quite large. So TLP, you go for TLP where heave restriction is paramount, a lot of heave motions are there, you cannot control heave. So heave motions to be restricted, and there you go for TLP. Now TLP has other paraphernalia, the expecting first thing what you have to do is make a foundation template at the base. So this is called well template and then you have foundation template where you are going to tie the tethers. So that is not an easy job. So these foundations sometimes they are piled to the seabed, underwater piling you have to do. Uh, semi-summer will not require that. 
So these are your tethers. So this is called a well template. Now from here actually your marine risers are going to will be taken to the top of the platform. So this is called a well template and this is the I think this they call foundation template. So this is the main point of departure from semi submersible design from its tethers. So this uh, the, the as naval architect you simply remember that stability is coming from the tethers and buoyancy is actually in all configurations is greater than the weight. So in preliminary analysis of TLPs or the preliminary design you calculate this. Now this we have done for semi submersible also this is weights and CGs. Then you calculate wind forces. current so this you have to find out from uh, oceanographic studies global performance analysis as regards motions then you can have drift force tendon tension now after this you find out global strength so this is mainly sea keeping mainly yes, excepting the last one that is tendon tension the yeah, last category is global strength so these all this is done from preliminary design So after this you go for various uh, um, iterations then you figure out the configuration. Pontoons now configuration of pontoons, pontoons stability columns. Uh, what remains is your deck. Now sometimes you will find that uh, the sketches are out here, this is called extended leg TLP. Now in the normal TLPs you will find they are sort of a ring shaped or box shaped. You will find a deck being supported on columns and since the TLPs are required to be stationary at one place you can have a ring, ring array of pontoons. So that means you can have a 
the columns can protrude below the pontoons. So, your pontoon can come essentially here. So, you are not bothered about the resistance to the transport of the platform. So, because it is fixed in one place. So, this is one variety now in which you will find the tethers are connected at the corner of the platforms and the corner columns. So, this is the most general design. Now, here actually a lot of variations in designs have taken place. So, here this is your foundation, uh, what is called foundation or tether foundation you can call and this is your well template. So, this is a normal design, but in variation of this you can have say one single column being supported on pontoons like this. This is called a C star. C star design. Now, here actually you will find the tethers coming at the extreme end of the pontoon. You have one single column. Now, C star design uh, either you can have one column or you can have one or two or three also, but some it will be arranged somewhere here. But basically, you have extended leg. Anyway, as usual, but this is why. Now, this is mainly done to reduce pitch motion. So, that means, in this case of platform you are reducing both the heat and pitch. So, the design is actually centered around, uh, I have told you in case of these platforms, uh, the reduction of motion. Primarily, the motion reduction is the major design criteria actually, because your platform is going to rest in one place. So, here actually the structure calculation is somewhat different from your hull girder bending and if you want to go deeper into the analysis, then you have to be, first thing is you have to know the failure modes of the platform, the squeeze pry, fatigue failure will come because of that. So, failure modes are very, very crucial. Based on the failure mode, you do your structure calculation. And structure, you cannot do it uh, you know, without calculation of platform hydrodynamics. Okay, hydrodynamics and structures will go hand in hand. 